the French resistance was a vital factor to the end of World War II. But this historic movement all began September 1st, 1939. The Germans' unprovoked invasion of Poland on September 1st to October 6th, 1939 caused a swift declaration of war by France and Great Britain. World War II had officially begun. Once France declared war, Germany targeted Poland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. They were all devastated within six weeks. France was quickly taken over and occupied by the Nazis. During this time, the government of France left for London in order to be protected. This is where the Resistance's leadership came in. Well, probably the most important individual was um, General Charles de Gaulle. Um, in a way, he sort of started the French resistance. The Nazi regime then forced France to divide into two governments, the German occupation on the northern sector and the German-controlled puppet government on the southern sector. The Germans freely enforced their beliefs and laws on both sides, but created a false puppet government for the theater of freedom while simultaneously controlling France. France was plagued by the Nazis. Once France became occupied, the Nazis started to set down some rules. They banned political parties, factions, and more. Citizens started small protests against the restriction. Soon after, these protests transformed into riots. The Nazis and the Gestapo could care less about the citizens of France. This angered the people greatly. This resistance was forced into existence on June 22, 1940. This was the surrender of France. The German forces had officially defeated the Allies and conquered France. With France officially taken over along with other low countries in Europe, things looked grim for the Allies. As Britain stood alone, Churchill knew that the only hope for the nation's survival and the rest of Europe lay in the hands of the President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. However, he didn't have to do it alone. The proud French people were furious after their quick and sound defeat. It would only take a spark to set up a citizen's resistance that would change the course of the world's largest war. These were the words that inspired a movement, the French resistance. The French resistance didn't only fight in battles though, they saved thousands of Jews from being sent to concentration camps, hiding them in the most unusual places just to be free. They also saved the countless lives of Allied soldiers who were trapped in occupied France. Chuck Yeager was a World War II pilot who was shot down over France. He was miraculously saved by French resistance members and was hidden from the Gestapo until he was able to heal his injuries and escape France to later become a hero. He was a World War II ace and in 1947 became the first pilot confirmed to have broken the speed of sound in a level flight. The Jewish citizens of France were the first to establish an organized resistance in the country. They were mainly focused on helping Jews from being captured and sent to concentration camps. Throughout the Nazi occupation, many resistance groups popped up. These groups were often collected members of races or ideologies that Hitler persecuted and hunted. By the time that Jean Moulin joined the groups together, there were eight major groups of the French resistance. The French resistance did many things to help the Allied war effort. 
They fed the Allies knowledge on troop movements, numbers, locations, and possible plans. They were saboteurs, assassins, and guerrillas. They carried out coordinated attacks on Gestapo outposts, which helped disrupt the German army. But perhaps their most important contribution was their help on the D-Day invasion. Um, I think the French resistance was critically important. They provided intelligence, um, you know, German troop movements. They accelerated the sabotaging of communication lines and transportation lines and trains and, you know, and ammunition. Many French Resistance members died for their cause, but their sacrifice is part of how the French Resistance so heavily impacted World War II. A lot of the French Resistance members that died were the leaders. These leaders were explicitly targeted by the Gestapo. Members of the Resistance would sometimes sell out to the Gestapo and reveal where the leaders were hiding. The Gestapo was huge in containing the Resistance, and the French did all they could to annoy and stop them. They assassinated, sabotaged, and attacked the Gestapo as often as they could. This led the French resistance to enhance their tactics to become as successful as they could. They planned and carried out crucial Gestapo assassinations to better the resistance and those who protected. They led 80% of the coal mining business on strike, devastating the occupied French economy. They worked on their intelligence networks to collect military information, such as fortifications and deployment locations. They set bombs to assassinate the military and to derail vital envoys from reaching their destination. In May 1943, Jean Moulin created the Conseil National de la Résistance. This united many separate resistances and coordinated them all under the French generals Henri Girard and Charles de Gaulle. This greatly strengthened the resistance's power and made them a force to be reckoned with. Although Jean proved to be successful in his efforts to unite France, his work did not come at a fair price. Jean Moulin was captured by the Gestapo. He was tortured to death by the infamous Klaus Barbie in Lyon and died on July 8, 1943. On June 6, 1944, D-Day began and the Allied troops began their invasion. On July 18th, Allied troops liberated tens of millions of oppressed civilians. With this distraction, resistance troops captured town halls and regained buildings in town. I think what really impresses me about the French resistance, it was a people's resistance. Initially, with Charles de Gaulle, it was, um, he was trying to speak primarily in the beginning to French soldiers who had military uh, experience and who could be mobilized uh, if you could get the communication to them, but gradually it became a kind of people's army. And it, it, it was made up of men, and it was made up of women, and it was made up of teachers, and you know, communists, and capitalists, and religious people, and not religious people. It was like intellectuals, some famous, really famous intellectuals and writers. So that's really, I think, a little bit unusual. Maybe that's the characteristic of the French resistance that is worth emphasizing. The French Resistance was the building blocks of France's new government and its principles. Their effect on World War II was unmatched against the other resistances across the globe. They saved lots of Jews from the Nazis and rescued fallen soldiers during battle. The Resistance worked tirelessly to help the Allies during World War II and played a major role during the D-Day invasion. The French Resistance will go down in history forever.